This lesson is check the JSON response object. The objectives for this lesson are to get a response with a body, get a response without a body, and get a response with only text. Once we learn how to do that, I'm then going to show you how to write a function to handle any kind of response, whether it has a body, not a body, or text only. Even though we've seen examples of JSON being returned with a body, let's go ahead and write one additional minimal web API to return a body. Open up the fetch samples.web API project, the minimal web API. Let's go ahead and stop it. And then right down here before the app.run, we're going to add another endpoint. And this one will be simply called slash API slash response with body. Now, all I'm going to do is return a results.ok, which we've done before, and we've used our response class that we have done before. But I want to just show you that you can put into these properties anything you want, right? So in the status of 200, I put a status text OK. I put a message equals success. And then the data is just a new person, and I just made up a first name and a last name and left all the other properties blank. But this will give us an example of a response with a body. So let's go ahead and run this. Once this is up and running, now let's go back over to our index.html in our front end website. Let's put back the server URI to the valid value that I had there before. And now let's add another div with another set of buttons. And this button, first one is going to be return a body. So that means I need to add a new function down here to make another fetch call. And that fetch is going to call that response with body. Now, you look at the then, I'm doing the response and then I'm spitting out the console.log. So I'm going to show you the actual response that we're getting back from fetch before I then return response.json, before I unwrap that body part. Then I'm going to go into the next then with our response and I'll do a console.log on the whole response object and then I'll do a console.log on just the data portion. Let's go ahead and run this one. And it should be no big surprise. We see the full response object that we get back from the fetch. We see our response that we get back. And then we see just the data itself. So this is kind of moving us a little bit more closer to how you might actually start using this, where you would actually just grab the dot data property from your response object and just use that to feed fields in an input form or maybe display people in a list, in a table, HTML table, which, by the way, we're going to do a little bit later in this course. Let's take a look at our second example where somebody might send you some JSON without a body, which basically means all we're going to get is the fetches response object and there will be no body in it. Once again, go back to the program.cs in our minimal web API. And let's stop. And let's insert another endpoint now, app.mapget slash API slash response without body. And now you can see the return results dot no content. And there's nothing that we're returning. There's no response object that we're creating. So let's go ahead and run this one. Let's go back to our front end now. And what we're going to do is add another button up here at the top, right after our response with body. And we'll do a response without body. So that means we need a, another function down here in our script. We're going to call that response without body from the fetch. We'll get back the response object. Now you can't use the dot JSON because there's no JSON. All we're going to do is pass that JSON object that we get back from fetch directly back to the next then. And then of course we'll do the response and we'll do a response dot status. So let's go ahead and save this and then we'll reload. When we come back, we see our no body returned. When we run this, you see the response and you can see the status is 204 and you also see the status of 204 being reported there in the console window as well. The next type of response you might get back from a web API would be where somebody's just sending you text only, not a JSON object, just a string. So let's take a look at how we would handle that. Go back to the web API. Let's stop it in the program.cs. Let's add another web API endpoint. This one will be slash API slash response with text. 
And you can see the return, we're doing a results.ok, and all we're doing is passing a single piece of text. There's no response object or anything else. Let's go ahead and run this so it gets started again. Let's go back to our front end and in the index.cshtml, let's add on an additional button. And this button is going to call a function called response with text. Let's go down and add this now in our script. So what we're going to do in this one is we're still calling the fetch just like we normally do, but look inside the first then. I'm going to go ahead and do a console.log on the response, but now I'm going to return response.txt, not response.json. I'm going to return response.txt because I know when I call this that all I'm going to be getting is text. That text is then is what gets sent on to the next then in the chain here, and that is what's going to be spit out on that console.log as that response is that text itself. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and reload. When we come back to our browser, we should see return text only. And we take a look and we see the text being spit out here. And if we look at the response, right, you don't see that text. It's still in the body. And the body use says it's true, which means we did read it, but we read it as text, not as JSON. So what if you're calling an API and you're not sure whether you're going to get back a JSON object, no JSON object, or just a piece of text? Well, it'd be good if we had a generic approach to process the response object and figure that out. Let's do that now. Back in our index.cshtml, let's add in a new button here. And on this button, we're going to call a function called response generic. Well, let's go down to the very bottom here. And we're actually going to put in two functions here. Here's our response generic, and you can see each of the URIs that match up with the sample we've already done in this lesson. Then I'm going to call each one of those individually. The fetch is going to give us that first response object, and we're going to call this function that's above here called process response object. And that's this one right here. So this one, we take in that fetch API response object. I set up a couple of variables, let text equals empty string, let body equals empty object. I then have a return object. This is what's going to be returned from this function. I've got an OK property that I get from response.ok. I got a status that I'll set from the response.status. Status text, response.status text, the URL is response.url. So I'm trying to grab everything I need from the response object and put it into my return object that I'm going to build here then whatever data I'm going to get. So this is the way it works. Let's scroll down now. I now have a try catch block. I'm going to do a response.txt. Response.txt works on any type of call. If I get back a body, if I don't get back a body, or if I just get simple text back. The text property will always return me something. I then attempt to convert that to JSON. So I take that text, I do a JSON.parse on it, and I get back a body. Now, one of two things is going to happen then. Either it's going to be successful or it's not going to be successful, in which case I will go to the catch block and I'll take whatever I got back from the text and I'll just put it into that data property. Otherwise, let's say everything worked correctly. Well, in that case, I'm going to then try to grab the body.data, so whatever's in that return value I'm getting back and assign it to ret.data. Now, here's the thing, there may not be anything in there, because if that text that I tried to parse was an empty string, which is what would I get but there's no content, then it's assigning a null into ret.data. So I'll just go ahead and check for that. And if it is equal to null, I'll know there's an empty string there. So I'll take that text in the empty string and I'll assign it to ret.data. So any way we slice it, out of all those three scenarios, I'm going to get something in ret.data. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll bring up our console window and we'll click on process response object. Now, if we've done everything OK, that return object that I just built should have OK of true, status of 200, and our data has been filled in with that person object that just simply had the last name and the first name filled in. Let's go back over here and let's try this same function, but without a body. So let's go ahead and reload that content. Come back to our browser, try this. And there we see the data is an empty string because we're getting back a 204, which is no content. Let's go back over here. And the last one that we'll do here then, of course, 
is response with text. We save that, we reload, we go back to our browser, we click on this, we see the OK is 200, and look at the data. There it is, status ID equals 200. So look at this, we've got every scenario now handled with this one function. Now, while theoretically every API call could return something different, boy, I sure hope you don't do that. Please try to stay consistent. Always return the same JSON object using the same properties. You change the property values as appropriate, but you should always have the same return object. Use that response object. The exception, of course, is when you're deleting. You probably usually return a 204 no content, although there is nothing wrong with returning a 200 and a response object like we're doing there. All up to you, but please just try to stay consistent. That way the consumer, they're always going to know what object to expect from you. They can then unwrap it with the .json method, and they don't have to figure out if they should use .json or .text and have all of this code that I had to write there. So in this lesson, we dived a little deeper into that response object that we get back from fetch. We used .json to retrieve a body. We access the response property without a body. We use .text to retrieve text only. We also created a generic function to handle each one of those situations should you need it. Coming up next, use the Fetch API to post, put, and delete data.